with it, man. It's your boy, O to the D, a.k.a. Knowledge General of the Jews. You know how I do. Also known as Hebrew Jude on these YouTube screens, a.k.a. Leatherface. And you got to remember, Leatherface is a franchise signed the mayor. So if you're listening to this right now, you're in my premiere. I thank you for coming through. I had another uh, video I did back in the days. Uh, this is on my other channel. That I'm locked out of, so, but I did do this video, uh, this is the, uh, the Golf of Tonkin lie, basically, false flag shit, man, y'all check this out. I wanted somebody that can lay out some plans to trap these guys and, uh, whoop hell out of them, kill some of them, that's what I want to do. Jew, he a Jew, she a Jew, we some Jews, we can get like to be a Jew too. Only if you're in the bloodline. flag operations are covert operations conducted by governments, corporations, or by other organizations, which are designed to appear as if they were carried out by other entities. The name is derived from the military concept of flying false colors, that is, flying the flag of a country other than your own. There are many variants of false flag operations, but one of the most popular carried out by government's operation. And now the Gulf of Tonkin incident. In the summer of 1964, President Lyndon Baines Johnson needed a pretext to commit the American people to the already expanding covert war in Southeast Asia. Three communist PT boats attacked an American destroyer off the coast of Vietnam yesterday, and today President Johnson's response was hard and tough. To any armed attack upon our forces, we shall reply. To any in Southeast Asia who ask our help in defending their freedom, we shall give it. In November of 2001, the LBJ Presidential Library and Museum released tapes of phone conversations with the President and then Defense Secretary Robert McNamara, where they openly discussed plans to use the staged Gulf of Tonkin incident as a pretext to expand the war. Then, in late 2005, the National Security Agency declassified its own official history of the Gulf of Tonkin and admitted that intelligence agency officers had deliberately skewed the intelligence and claimed that Vietnamese patrol boats had attacked U.S. destroyers on August 4, 1964, when in reality they had done nothing, even while being fired on by U.S. forces. Congress then authorized the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, the Tonkin Lie, paved the way for 58,000 American deaths and over a million and a half dead Vietnamese.
actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin have today required me to order the military forces of the United States to take action in reply. The initial attack on the destroyer Maddox on August 2nd. He looked like he lied. Was repeated today <laughs> by a number of hostile vessels attacking two U.S. destroyers with torpedoes. The destroyers and supporting aircraft acted at once on the orders I gave after the initial act of aggression. We believe at least two of the attacking boats were sunk. There were no U.S. losses. The performance of commanders and crews in this engagement On August 2nd, the destroyer Maddox reported it was attacked by a North Vietnamese patrol boat. It was an act of aggression against us. We were in international waters. I sent officials from the Defense Department out and we recovered pieces of North Vietnamese shells that were clearly identified as North Vietnamese shells from the deck of the Maddox. So there was no question in my mind that it occurred. But in any event, we didn't respond. Two days later, the Maddox and the Turner Joy, two destroyers, reported they were attacked. Uh, where are these torpedoes coming from? Well, we don't know. Presumably from these unidentified craft. There were sonar soundings. Torpedoes had been detected. Other indications of attack from patrol boats. We spent about 10 hours that day trying to find out what in the hell had happened. At one point, the commander of the ship said, we're not certain of the attack. Another point, they said, yes, we're absolutely positive. And then finally, late in the day, Admiral Sharp said, yes, we're certain it happened. So I reported this to Johnson, and as a result, there were bombing attacks. Why did he just push that dude in the butt like that, though, man? That was crazy. Spawn targets in North Vietnam. Johnson said, we may have to escalate. I'm not going to do it without congressional authority. And he put forward a resolution, the language of which gave complete authority to the president to take the nation to war. The Tonkin Gulf Resolution. Now, let me go back to the August 4th attack. Afterwards, showed that our judgment that we'd been attacked that day was wrong. It didn't happen. American eyes, American eyes, view the world from American eyes, bury the past, rob us blind, and leave nothing behind. American eyes, American eyes. Once the enemy 
targets were spotted on radar or sonar. Those are the main methods for detecting targets you can't see directly. The man in charge of the main gun director, August 4th, 1964, was a four-year veteran. He was also an expert sonar man, Patrick Park. Park is now a businessman in Los Angeles. Tell me, do you think that night, August 4th, in the pitch black, in a heavy swell, rainstorms, was there anything to shoot at out there? No, I don't. I'm certain that there was not anything to shoot at right from the beginning. The captain asked me immediately after the attack to go down and evaluate all the recordings that had been made of uh, noise that was that sonar was reporting. And uh, I kept myself pretty busy for the next three days, really, uh, trying to evaluate these things and determine if we had heard anything that might have been even a question mark that it might have been a torpedo or anything else in the water not related to the two ships or noise of either one of them. And then what was your evaluation? <laughs> Christ, crew entertainment, man. Crew diving. Well, as you see, um, another false flag event to get us into the war, right? And then they did the same thing with 9-11 to get us to go to war. Because 9 11 had nothing to do with them in the Middle East, in the Middle East. But they told you that when it first started. And then in the middle of it, they decided to say, yo, no, nah, we're not over there for that. Right? And that's why the uh, the Tillman dude got killed, who had the uh, scholarship. Well, he had the, uh, he got drafted to the Arizona uh, Cardinals, I, be I believe. And uh, he gave that up to go to the Army. Because he thought people came over here and blew things up in 9 11. But come to find out, that ain't why they was over there. And he was right back telling his family he's ready to go home because that's not, he's over on false pretenses. And he got killed by friendly fire in the Army. You can look at the story. It's on, uh, I think I did, I think I did re-upload that. If not, that might be the next one I upload. But they took him out because he was about to spill the beans on. They was out there for no reason. He's out there to get oil and do all this other stuff and mess these people in up. That was it. They wasn't out there because they knocked down the building. But they do these false flags all the time, and we believe. So we got to get down to the gritty and see how they was doing it back then in the days. Because if you think about it, they don't do nothing new. They do the same shit. We just fall for it. But anyway, man, I thank y'all for coming through. I'm going to hit that bell. You know what I'm saying? Stay on the lookout. and I'm telling when I'm going to do something, man. But uh, if you ain't getting knowledge, you ain't getting nothing. I crew this.